This Rock Talk podcast recording is an interview and opinion product that is the property of rocksubculture.com, all rights reserved. Rocksubculture.com is not responsible for any statements or opinions expressed by the guests of this program. Welcome to Rock Talk, the official podcast for rocksubculture.com. Each podcast features interviews with special guests to discuss all aspects of popular music. Rocksubculture.com travels the globe to experience, review and archive live concert events. Interview those involved in producing and performing a variety of genres of popular rock music as well as find and learn about related studio and stage use artifacts and memorabilia. Now, let's join our host, Jason DeBord. And it's a real honor to talk to you. I'm a big, big fan of you guys. Oh, cool. Always good to hear. <laughs> yes. Welcome to my podcast, and today my guest is Steve Marker uh, with Garbage. So welcome, and thanks for taking the time to talk to me today. No problem, Jason. Yeah, I, I actually, yeah, I saw you guys in Vegas last April when you guys just started up touring again, and I'm going to come out to the show next week at the same venue, so it'll be cool yeah. to do sort of a one year later show with you guys. <laughs> So do you guys have like mental markers when you have those experiences where you can kind of look back on the last year and, and what you guys have done with the new album and touring and everything? Well, I don't, I don't think we've absorbed it all yet, really, because we've just <laughs> been going and going and going and um, haven't had a lot of time to reflect, to tell you the truth. Yeah. Um, we were talking last night, we're kind of out in the Midwest right now, heading towards Las Vegas in, in a week, but... Um, We've been all over the world, and it's just been an amazing amount of, um, uh, you know, variety of these huge festivals. And we went to Russia and Siberia and Australia and Singapore, and it's just been crazy. And I think it's turned out a lot better than uh, we ever thought it would. Um, we probably kept going on the road a lot longer than we thought we would at first, and and uh, we keep we feel like we keep doing better shows. Yeah. So I guess we're just getting more confident and, and um, loosening up a bit on stage, maybe, and just having more fun. And I, I think that's the key, is that it, it is still fun. Yeah, you know, I, I, I saw you guys at the Warfield in San Francisco last um, October, too, and I definitely okay. noticed a change just comparing, like, April to October. It seemed like... I mean, actually, the April show is actually one of my favorite shows last year, but at the really? same time, I could see some changes, and, uh, you know, it seemed like you've evolved kind of just since, you know, from touring and getting yeah, back together and that's, everything. That's awesome to hear. I mean, people people do say tell us that, and... I, I think because we're kind of right in the middle of it, we don't really know exactly what they're talking about. Right. <laughs> um, but they say, yeah, I mean, it's just, I think people enjoy it when they can see that you're having fun on stage. Yeah. And not, not worrying about every little thing, and if something goes wrong, well, so what, you know? Yeah. Sometimes that's the best part of the show is when something goes wrong. Right. <laughs> so your last album was called Not Your Kind of People, and I kind of took it as a... Uh, succinct way of summing up both your band and your your fans and i'm wondering is is that fan base like a lot larger than you expected it to be when you when you set out touring again and with the new album um i can't speak for everybody but for me yeah i think it was a lot it was a big surprise yeah I mean, we just had no idea and uh and i guess that there's a lot of people that i don't know kind of feel the same way we do about a lot of things and um, you know, we're just trying to, we kind of just try to make music that we want to hear. <laughs> we yeah. did our own radio station. That's what we put on the radio station. So. Yeah, that's funny. Cause I was, I that was some other people like that. Yeah. That's one of the things I was going to ask you if, if you guys are kind of your primary audience when you start making new music, like you're making it for yourselves. Um, pretty much. It's, it's pretty much the four of us in a little room and, and, kind of trying to come up with stuff that all that everybody's going to enjoy and everybody's going to, you know, get get jazzed about working on. Right. You know, there's, there's a lot of ideas that we come up with that just don't fly because 
nobody gets excited about it. And those are the ones that, that get erased. And, and the good ones, or at least what we think are good, are the ones that we keep working on. And that's kind of how that all goes. Yeah. And I think you guys are kind of rare as a band because you are you at least seem to be very genuine and authentic artists when it comes to your work. And is it rewarding for you to, to find success and kind of be true to yourself and what you guys like and what you think is good music? Um, I guess, you know, I'd have to say that's a really gratifying thing for, to have somebody say because especially at first, um, a lot of people saw us as, as this like totally manufactured um, entity that was just made up to somehow, you know, make money. Right. I guess. <laughs> and and uh, that was so far from the truth. And and you know, we'd all been in bands forever, and and we we started working with Shirley because we liked her and you know her ideas and her sound, and then it's really just kind of did the first album for fun with no expectations. Right. Just happened to kind of be successful at the time. And, and uh, but people said, oh, you know, you're this, like, manufactured thing. And we never felt like that. So now, finally, I think people are maybe seeing that we are doing it because we love it. Yeah. I don't know how else to say it. I mean, it is sort of a, it is just something we feel like we need to do and, and love to do. Yeah, one, that's why we do it. Yeah, one thing I wanted to ask you about, you know, you guys started this band in the, the mid-90s. Mm-hmm. What What is your view on 90s music? Because for me, I've always felt like, I don't know, it's sort of a weird time, like Nirvana was awesome, but then it sort of spun the music industry into where there's all these other grunge bands. And I didn't really think the grunge, you know, quote, grunge bands really sounded anything like Nirvana, and I wasn't really into that whole scene. And then it seemed mm-hmm. like, you know, the 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 masses were listening to things like Garth Brooks and Kenny G and stuff. So it just seemed like there was fragments of really good music. Like, you know, the Pixies is one of my favorite bands, for instance, and, you know, stuff like that and Sonic Youth. But it seemed like for the masses, I don't know, it just seemed like people generally had bad taste or something, at least in my opinion. I mean, it's all subjective. Yeah, but is is that ever, does that ever change? I mean, I don't know if it's, do you think it's better now? Um, you know, I, I grew up in the eighties, so I loved almost everything in the eighties, but you know, yeah. I mean, I was a kid, I'm nostalgic about it, but it seemed like since then, it seems like music has really kind of fragmented into a lot of different sub genres of music. And you guys kind of came on the scene and you just had a totally different sound, different attitude. I mean, it just seemed like it kind of came out of nowhere and I was just wondering, how that happened sort of in um, a musical environment that was just a lot different at the time. Uh, it might be uh, for a lot of the reasons you just sort of listed, which was a lot of what happened right after Nirvana was awful. Yeah. And, and it was just dumb guitars, rock, um, maybe wearing different clothes, kind of dressed up to try to <laughs> jump on that bag with man, right. and wagon. And then, and, and we we had been working for like ten years up to Nirvana, you know, working on sort of underground punk rock guitar bands, and, and you know, like you mentioned, the Pixies, they, they were awesome, and, yeah. and all these underground bands, um, like I don't know, Pildos are from Madison that that we worked with in our studio, and then, but then after you know when the big money came along after Nirvana, it just kind of yeah, really and we, you know, we were also listening to more like. The wax tracks label electronic heavy stuff and um, maybe ministry and, and yeah and a lot of electronic just kind of dancey stuff from England right at the at the same time we just kind of felt like combining all that to get away from um, you know I always hated long guitar solos and 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 kind of that sort of ego trip yeah musicianship and that you know then you have these so called grunge new wave bands coming out that. You know, they have guitar solos and drum solos. It's like, screw that. <laughs> yeah. Well, I like very vocal-driven music, personally. Yeah. And, you know, it's funny you mentioned about the guitar solos, and I was interested in your your kind of perspective as a producer. Like, um, recently there on the Internet, someone broke out um, some of the Clash's music into their component parts. So, like, on YouTube, you can listen to, you know, Rock the Casbah, you can listen to just the vocals or just the guitar oh, wow. or just the keyboards. And for me, it's cool because, I mean, I don't have any music talent or ability or anything. I love music. 
But it's mm-hmm. interesting, like for Rock the Casbah to listen to each component because you listen to the vocals, it's like, yeah, that's Rock the Casbah. You look and listen to the keyboards, you know, it's mm-hmm. clearly that. You get to the guitar, and if if someone didn't tell me, I actually wouldn't recognize it. So I'm kind of interested in your perspective as a guitarist and as a music producer. Um, you know, what is kind of your view of the different elements of that each member brings and does each element have to kind of carry the whole song on its own or or you know it seems like you guys kind of break things up too yeah i i think kind of like you said that's the vocal is is what's key mm-hmm. i mean you can have the best drum part and best drum sound in the world on a, a shitty song it doesn't matter right it's still going to be a shitty song and, and you know the melody uh you know we're kind of pop geeks and we like melodies and, and and all that, and then the vocals got to be. That's what's so great about working with Shirley is because she has a very distinctive voice. I think, and, right? And then you hear hear it, and you know it's her. And and I think everything else in the entire record is there to serve that. Mm-hmm. And and if there's a guitar that's fighting for the attention of the lead vocal, then there's something wrong, you know? Right. And so we tend to do more just parts that are more pieces of the puzzle that make the song work, rather than some sort of show off the instrumental thing right and then none of us are like um expert players you know we're not going to be auditioning for a broadway broadway <laughs> pit orchestra or something like that you know we kind of just do this one thing and we've always done it and somehow somehow we've made it fit together and work right you know you guys came out with your new album last year and i'm not just saying this because i'm interviewing you i actually i did my year-end review on my site um in uh-huh. december and i i I think I picked it as the number two, my number wow. two favorite album of the year. But the news now is that you guys are are going to go back and I guess start in June for something maybe to come out in yeah, early fourteen. Yeah. So, what is kind of your collective process, and do you think it's changed now that you guys have you know taken the long break and then come back together and done another album? And also um, with the changes in technology, you know, since the nineties, does that really impact your guys's um, process for creating music, or is it just sort of another tool? Um, well, the recording technology is great. I don't, I don't say it's great in every way, but for us, it has let us. Um, we don't all live in the same city, so we we can mm-hmm. all we can spend time at home, work on stuff and ideas, and, and you know, you can literally, literally, you know, file share parts around and, and kind of work. Right. We're, we're going to try to be doing that more on the next recording where it's, uh, we don't even have to be all together all the time. Right. And, uh, a lot of that's just, it's really expensive to, to <laughs> fly people around to so you can sit in the same room. So we're, right. gonna, so we're trying to figure out how we can actually sort of collaborate over the internet without being in the same room as much. And, um, I don't know. We just loosened up about a lot of things with the recording. We, I don't know how much you know of the story, but we, we got stuck where we were spending so much time in the studio, you know, well over a year on a couple of the records, just recording, and, you know, people would get tired and frustrated and want to get away from it, and so we'd everybody go home. It was just right. really it looked tedious. It was tedious. And, and uh, so now we're going to do anything we can to avoid that. And uh, I, I don't know exactly what that's going to be, but if it's not fun and enjoyable, I you know, for us, we don't want to do it anymore. Right. But it is, but, you know, I think any music, you can kind of hear that, I think, when somebody isn't having a good time doing something. Even if it isn't happy music, you know, you have to feel like they're being successful in, in, in communicating something. And, yeah. and if they're not, I think you can tell that. Yeah. So then it seems like you're kind of going in this direction by, um, you know, doing your own record without, you know, uh, a label and then doing this more on the creative end, it seems like you're kind of going more towards art and away from it being like, quote, a job. Um, like you're, you're trying to make it um, as enjoyable as possible and, and maybe more artistic. I would hope that that's true. Yeah. And that would be that would definitely the goal. Yeah. You know, and, and I'd, I'd like to figure out how we could keep doing it for a long time without, you know, getting, getting tired of it. And, you know, there's no reason we can't do all sorts of stuff right. for a long time. Right. So I don't know. Just realizing that's been really fun. Yeah, and with with 
the changes in the music industry, do you think it's important to keep the album format alive? Whereas today, you know, it seems like everything's more single driven and, you know, people just buy one song and not really even care who the artist is. It seems like the younger generations now, you know, everything's about, you know, individual songs rather than albums and artists. Um, It probably isn't important to do that. We still are sort of clinging on to that notion, I guess, by the fingernails, Mm -hmm. (laughs) like like refusing to let it go because it it meant so much to us um, growing up. Yeah. Yeah, I'm the same way. But, but, you're right. I mean, we we also that is kind of liberating for us too because we realized that we could just put out a, a three or four song EP for a couple bucks on iTunes. Right. And that would be totally fine too. So in a way, that frees you up like that too. Yeah, I read that you guys have a collaboration with the Screaming Females um, for Record Store Day. Yeah. So you're covering Patti Smith's "Because the Night." Is that right? That's correct. And how was that? And uh, how did you like collaborating and also covering, you know, someone else's work? Um, we've always done uh, as B sides. We've done a lot of covers mm-hmm. over the years, but um, never anything that anybody really heard that much. And we were on tour with them last fall. Yeah, I saw for, them. At, they uh, were the ones in their San Francisco show. They were really good. I think you're right. Yeah, yeah. I mean, and I didn't know much about them before that, and. I was just blown away. It was just, she's uh, Marissa's amazing. Marissa yeah, amazing. <laughs> she's she, bo- I, she's born to be on the stage. I think. <laughs> yeah, just amazing. We had so much fun and, and really liked them. And uh, said, you know, hey, we got to do something some sometime. And you know, one thing went to another, and Record Store Day came up, and let's do something. I don't, I can't even remember how how doing because the night came about. Um, I think the two, I think Shirley and Marissa were just. Uh, talking about what song they could possibly do, and, and we started bringing Marissa out on stage uh, during the shows to do that song with her, and uh, she just shreds on it. She just, yeah. <laughs> her, she, her guitar playing is just amazing. Yeah. Me. And uh, it's it's cool to support, you know, indie record stores, too. I think that's something that's, we don't want to lose. Right. Yeah. So, if you could collaborate with any living artist, is there anyone in particular particular that you guys would love to, you know, do a song with? Wow, it, living, yeah. So, so it has to be within the realm of possibility, yeah. Or, or is this a fantasy type question? Well, it's, it could be fantasy, but still, someone, <laughs> someone possible. You never know. Um, I'd say David Bowie. Yeah. Um, you know if whenever there's a conversation about awesome artists throughout our lives, he's pretty much one of the top, top guys on there. Cool. And, uh, and that's still around. There's plenty that aren't still around that I could think of. It'd be cool too, but that's not going to happen. Yeah. So I know we have, uh, just a a minute or two left. So my last question is, um, what do you think the legacy of your band is now? And what would you want it to be like eventually? Like, do you have any objective, or are you just, you know, making art and putting it out there? Um, it's a great question, and I think that somehow we figured out to. Like, we just get a lot of um, messages from people, mm-hmm. you know, fans, and uh, a lot of them say that we've had something to do with the, them getting through a hard time. Yeah. You know, sometimes unbelievably awful or sometimes just getting through a day, you know. Yeah. And and just to for me just to think that we were able to offer that to somebody in in some some degree is is amazing. You know, I think that's why people do art is, you know, kind of share right where they're at and uh but but the fact that we've, you know, meant something more than uh, maybe a, a Justin Bieber means to someone. <laughs> you yeah. know, a little a couple levels beyond that. It's, maybe it's not, it's not for everybody. And we're not trying to be for everybody. But, right. Um, but uh, that's, that's what's important to me, and if people remember that. And, you know, if it got, got them through, through some hard times, you know, with what Shirley had to say or how we, how 
we said it or maybe a couple of things that we sort of stood for. I think that's awesome. So I would, I would have to say that. Yeah. Well, I will say like when I went to that Vegas show, you know, I try to always talk to a lot of fans and just, cause I'm always interested in what the fans are thinking too. And it seems like mm-hmm. everyone came from all corners of the globe for that show. Totally. Like, it's so spread out. It's unbelievable. And you ask people, you know, I always ask people, what's your favorite band? And everyone there is garbage. And, and I, I, my follow-up question was, well, what's your second favorite band? And it's like, there, there really wasn't one. So it seems like <laughs> the people that you reach, you know, they really, um, they love you guys. And like, yeah. you know, you, you, it's not just liking, you know, a band or something. It's, it go, I think it goes beyond that. So it's, you guys, you guys have a really awesome fan base. So I think that we really do, kind yeah. of speaks to what you're doing and your music and everything else. So yeah, we've been really, really lucky cool. with that. Yeah. yeah. Well, thanks so much for um, taking the time to talk to me. I'm looking forward to seeing you guys again next week. And, uh, yeah, looking we, forward we to. We have to get back there too. Yeah, cool. <laughs> okay, all right. Well, thank, thanks all so right, much. Jason. Thanks so much. All right, see you then. All right, okay. Bye bye. Bye. Thank you for listening to our program, Rock Talk. For the latest gig archives, articles, and features about popular music and concert events around the world, please visit us online at www.rocksubculture.com.